Good day Sorry. and welcome to our first program of Methodism on the Move. I have with me the superintendent ministers of the Methodist churches of the two circuits in St. Vincent and Grenadines. On the left of the camera is Reverend Cornelius Harry, who is in charge of the circuit in the north and northeast. So it's the Georgetown Muncoke circuit. And we have on the right of the camera, Reverend Philbert Delaney, who also has a portion of the north. He is the superintendent minister of the Kingstown Chateaubelay circuit. Rev, welcome to our program. We are starting in the month of May. And Reverend Delaney, if you can just give us an idea as to the significance of this particular month, the month of May, in the life of Methodists around the world, including in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Okay. First of all, let me say it is a joy to be on this first program of what we hope will be a regular occurrence, Methodism on the move. 284 years ago, John Wesley experienced a conversion that made him describe it as his heart being strangely warm and him having an assurance that he was trusting in God, God alone for his salvation. That occurred on the 24th of May, 1738, at, at a place in Aldersgate Street in London. Since then, every year, we have regarded that experience as significant in what is now called the Methodist Church. At the same time, though, in 1967, the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas became an independent conference and so we also celebrate that in May. And during the time nearest to the 24th of May, the Connational Conference or Connational Council is usually held. So for us Methodists, Order's Gate celebration is about those two occurrences. Let's look at some of the activities, therefore, that are scheduled for this month. And uh, Reverend Harry, let's begin with you. Thank you very much. Um, this year, we are celebrating under the theme, Reset for Spiritual Renewal and, and Growth. And on Friday, May the 20th, at 6.30 p.m., we, we are going to have a, a district, this is ac across the district, district parenting seminar, and this would be held via Zoom, and, and um, we'll be looking at the theme, reclaiming our roles as spiritual nurturers, and how we're looking as well as how to develop your, your child spiritually. Also on Saturday, the 21st, at 7.30 p.m., um, we are meeting at God's Mercy Seat in prayer. This is a two-hour uh, period of prayer. Um, and this also would be on the Zoom platform. And this is sponsored by the Kingston Chateaubelay Circuit Youth and Young Adult Commission. Uh, for those persons who would be joining us, um, we would send you the Zoom link. Uh, I, can, I can tell you what it is now, so you can grab a, a pen or pencil and, and, and note it. The ID is 860-2487-8051, and the passcode is 725-463. 725-463. On Sunday, now this is a special day for us, Sunday the 22nd. Although Aldersgate really is on the 24th, we celebrate the nearest Sunday to the 24th. And so on this Sunday, the, the 22nd, we are having a creative, compact, 
celebration in all our congregations, all 26 congregations across the nation. Worship services will be held in all these congregations and um, services will be held at 7 and 9 in the morning. And then in the afternoon at 3 p.m., there would be a grand procession of witness from the Sand Hill Government School to the Annisville Plain Field. And we would be led on this procession by the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Band. Now, this is going to be an exciting, an exciting time of witness. Uh, I know there are those who have been pent up for a couple of years due to COVID, and they could not um, get to, to do the marching as we normally do every year. And so I know people are looking forward to this. And so we're inviting all and sundry and be part of this wonderful time in the presence of God. So it's not limited just to Methodists. We're inviting all and sundry. If, if the, all in the nations can come, that is what we would hope. Um, and, and, and because we expect everyone to go away from, at the end, being spiritually filled. Then, we look now to Tuesday, the 24th, at 6 p.m. There will be a district radio show. And this is um, via the South Caribbean District Youth, South Caribbean District YouTube featuring choirs, choirs and groups, uh, including St. Vincent um, singing Methodist hymns, and, um, and people are invited to join in and listen to these beautiful Methodist hymns. And they are not only going to be sung to the traditional way, some of them are going to be contemporary music. Very interesting, it's, and, and I expect and inviting people, please, not to miss um, something like this. Then on Wednesday, God's willing, at Wednesday, Wednesday the 25th, at, at, at 5.30 p.m., there's going to be a public town hall to our forum, right here in Kingston, at the Kingston Hall, Church Hall. And the theme of this, this um, forum is going to be res resetting our evangelism, reclaiming the males. Now, this is something again that we are, we are looking forward to and expecting to have a great number of people turning out to listen to, to this to this forum. Our moderator would be Brother Ronnie Daniel, and our presenters would be Sister Laura Anthony Brown, Brother Nigel Scott, and Brother Taja Williams. I just want to flip quickly back to the afternoon of Sunday, May 22nd. After the procession of witness, there will be a celebratory service at the Arnettsville Plain Field. And the preacher will be Brother Emil Dugan as we celebrate the lay preachers on that evening. To the question of the remaining events, on the 28th, there will be a gospel caravan starting at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, going both sides of the two circuits. One, the leeward side and the other one, the windward side, and all of the congregations will be covered, all 26 of them. The Friday evening before, and I deliberately left this one for last, is because the Methodist School Development Initiative 
is very much a thrust throughout the South Caribbean district. And last year, there was a competition among the primary school students. Because there is no Methodist primary schools in St. Vincent run by the church, this year we are inviting a Sunday school pupil of primary school age from both the Kingston Chateaubillier circuit and the Georgetown Montcourt circuit to join the 15 other primary school students across the South Caribbean district in, in this competition. Last year it was top class and we really believe it will be similar this year. Just very briefly before I ask you to drill down a bit on the two sessions that target um, parents, the one on reclaiming the males, and then of course we have the other training session for the parenting session. Before, before you get into that, just very concisely, what does the South Caribbean district comprise of? Okay, the South Caribbean district is one of eight districts in the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. And it comprises three circuits in Barbados, James Street, Spicetown, Bethel, and Ebenezer. Kingston, Chateau Belair, and Georgetown, Montcoke in St. Vincent. St. Lucia being a circuit on its own. Grenada being a circuit on its own. And then in Trinidad and Tobago, we have North Trinidad, South Trinidad, and Tobago. There are 50 congregations scattered throughout the South Caribbean district. Okay, thank you very much. So let's drill down a bit with respect to the seminars that are targeting one, men, and then the other, parenting. Why? Okay. Why the specific geographic, why the specific demographic, sorry? Okay. We have done an analysis and we recognize that in the Caribbean that the population census will show that there are more male babies born than females. This is reflected in the schools. You go into the classroom and the evidence is right there. However, this is not reflected in the churches. And we believe that we need to revisit our evangelistic thrust to see in what way we can embrace a very vital element of our society. Anytime you want to destroy a society, you simply destroy the males. It is important for us to understand the, the significance of the seed of the male and the fact that unless we nurture our males and have males who are strong spiritually and otherwise, we are not going to have a strong and wholesome society. And we are really of the view that this cannot be a matter which we will patch. So we are not starting at the teenage years. We are going all the way back to the preschool and doing a long-term effort in making sure that the programs that we put in place will be sustainable for all of the ages of our males as we try to reconnect them to God and to a way of living that will be meaningful for all of us here in the Caribbean. And then we have the other um, parenting seminar. The parenting seminar is part of the South Caribbean District Education Celebration. The festival is in its second year and it is called the CSOS Festival. Celebrate Education, Support Our Schools. And it is part of the South Caribbean District Education Thrust, where we have hired a consultant and we have been doing significant work in building up our Methodist schools towards making them choice schools and changing the whole ethos to reflect that which a Methodist school should reflect. The, the seminar, therefore, is one way of us 
moving out of the classroom and helping parents of these children to connect to that which we are seeking to do so that both the classroom and the parents, along with the church, can be moving in the same direction. So is it um, open just to parents of children who are at Methodist schools in the district, or can anybody? The program will be on Zoom, and it is open to anyone. And the Zoom link will be circulated as widely as possible because we want persons to be a part of it. Let us look uh, a bit then at uh, Wesley and his teachings. There are quite a few tenets, but we know about spreading of scriptural holiness, and we also know about the Christian education component. How much of this um, is still a practice among Methodists today? All of it. And we will do ourselves well not only to understand all of it, but to recognize that we must make a, a significant impact in those areas. When the Methodist Church speaks of the fact that we have been under God ways to spread scriptural holiness throughout the land and to transform the nation, it is not simply speaking about an emotional spiritual hype. We are talking about the fact that a Methodist, wherever he or she may be, including on the job, is making a significant difference for the better of themselves, other persons, and the society. It means, therefore, that our work habits have to be such that will be pleasing to God. Our spending of money, the conversations that we are engaged in, the laws that we take part in passing in the legislature, the, the, the things that we do even in terms of seeking to propel social justice in the community. The whole justice system itself must be such that once Methodists are involved, they seek always to please God and to do things that will have positive effect on ways in humanity. And uh, maybe Reverend Cornelius, we can look at that component, the Christian education component. Good. So the, the, in, in, this, in this area, we look, the, the Methodism has taken off and, 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 and has been growing. And this is how it, it actually happens. Wesley, Wesley evaluated and Wesley empowered and, uh, and selected men to, to spread education. Now, Methodism started where the, the, the not, not by government, not by other organization groups. Methodism was focused um, among the slaves. The, the church, the Methodists, went after the slaves to teach them and to, and to educate them. And Wesley could not do this alone. So Wesley had a group of selected people and, and it became key to, method, to Methodism today. He called them lay preachers. Today we call them local preachers. And they did a significant work in spreading the education across the nation. And, and, and today, um, that's a legacy that Wesley would have left for us. And we, we give God thanks. And within the congregations, here of, of the class system, and I think that is one of the things that was handed down. Surely, other, in other congregations, mm -hmm. non Methodists, they may be referred to as small groups. Mm -hmm. What's the significance of, of, of that in terms of the Christian education? Those are the, the, the those groups are what what is called, they were called societies. Um, those societies were set up 
and they were meant to, to carry the message of education. They did the work uh, on the ground. And the class meeting system is, it, we can call it the nucleus, because everything else was built around it. These groups met, and they didn't necessarily meet at church. They, they met at other home, at people's homes and so on, and, um, and they, 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 they studied the Bible and, and, and they carried the message. Now, so, so we have that as, the, as a key area in the church, the, the class meeting system. Where we have, where we don't have a class system, we see what happens in the church. So would you say that um, the class system is an instrument for nurturing of the membership within the congregations? That is precisely its focus and its goal, to nurture. That is precisely what it is, to nurture. How would you respond, uh, Reverend Delaney, to the statement that the Methodist Church, it's steeped in tradition and it's hardly relevant for these times. Okay. I think anyone making that statement do not fully understand the Methodist movement. In the first place, the Methodist Church stands for a principle of holy living. And in addition to that, we are encouraged to be involved in works of mercy, the kind of outreach work that we have been engaging over the years. Even as we talk about the whole idea of being a traditional church, we try very hard to keep the balance between emotion and knowledge. So we're not a church that seeks basically just to push knowledge or just to push emotional worship, but to have a balance. In addition, anyone taking the Methodist hymn book and analyzing the hymns in those hymn books, you have not only uh, instruments of being able to sing and praise God, but it's also a tool that teaches theology of our church. For example, while John Wesley would have preached several sermons audibly, his brother Charles would have penned thousands of hymns that really were sermons in hymns. And it's very important that as, as a people, we understand the value of the hymns in our Methodist hymn book. Suffice to say, though, that in addition to the traditional hymns that we still continue to sing with joy, there are the contemporary hymns that we have used and we continue to use widely. There's absolutely no restriction that you cannot use these okay. contemporary hymns. And in fact, over the past few years, there have been a number of West Indian hymn writers and we have those hymns, whether it is the reggae beat, like the Christmas um, hymns that we have, or whether it is steel band beat coming out of the Trinidad rhythm. We do have the hymns. We do have a mixture of hymns. And I would want to invite those persons to join us for worship, particularly on Sunday. And you will see the blend of the hymns. The Methodist denomination is among the established movements which have been seeing declining membership. I know that our theme, or sub-theme, is Reset for Renewal and Growth. How do these two things mesh? Okay. In terms of declining membership, this Order's Gate celebration sets off an initiative of evangelism thrust in which we will be seeking to reconnect to those persons who are still very much 
members of our church, but who may be irregular in attending. There will be a special evangelistic trust to embrace them and to bring them back into the fold. In addition, we have to recognize that there are some social things that we must do. Let me just share with you eight initiatives that we accepted at the South Caribbean District for this decade that we are in, 2021, all the way through to 2030. For example, the Methodist School Development Project that I indicated, intentional faith development project as well, which is a Christian education initiative. Data information development and the fact that we have this studio set up there, you can begin to see what we're getting into. We're, we're the whole record keeping and the way we're able to disseminate information, we are, we, we've started to revisit that and beginning to make a change so that we are bringing things to the modern level of operating. The youth woman, right here in the South Caribbean district, we have the South Caribbean District Youth, and they have been doing fantastic work since the, they were activated last year. And you're going to begin to see a transformation in the whole element of youth work in the circuit. This year, for example, we are going to have this return district youth leadership training seminar. And that's an initiative where we will try to train and develop our young people. The media and publications, health and wellness initiatives, film and development initiatives. So these are things that are not only being embraced at the district level, but things that will be drilled down and implemented at the circuit and congregational level. So in, in relation to, we, we, you spoke about the Lap, lapsed members per, or persons who are not very regular at church, that there is going to be special focus on yes. those people. Yes. How about the unchurched? Definitely. That has always been our focus and that will not change. That the unchurched will be embraced, brought in, trained, and let me say to you, church does not only ends and begins inside the four walls of the building. In fact, as far as the Methodist Church is concerned, the emphasis is not even on, on building cathedrals. The emphasis is really on touching lives and making a difference in the lives of the people. And what will very well happen that you will find uh, mission cells being developed all over as we try to reach people where they are and try to develop them spiritually. What is currently happening on the ground? Okay, what is currently happening in the ground in terms of planning? For example, in North Leeward, we have a new minister there. I have met with the leadership in North Leeward last Sunday, and we are looking at the whole evangelistic thrust in that area. We are looking to have seminars, for example, family seminars. We are looking to reactivate Sunday school, so the whole, and in some of the congregation, the way that we have morning worship, it being adjusted slightly to make sure that we have time of being able to nurture the children and everybody then worshiping together as a group. We will have various other seminars looking at social issues and discussing those and discussing what we at the church will do to help to strengthen those. We also will be seeking, whether it is through the preschool um, or other means, to try to develop those persons who come under our influence so that the whole idea of trying to reach young men and trying to bring them to Christ and trying to bring a new way of outlook on life, that is those are things that we have started to work on. Are there any social programs in, in, in place? Yes, there are social programs in place, and, and some of those social programs include not only reaching out to people, like for example, um, we offer bursaries and scholarships that will continue. We, we, we recently helped um, one household with a home through the disaster um, 
committee that was set up last year out of the volcanic eruption that will continue. Farmers will be helped right across the country. That will continue. That is not going to stop. Anything at all that we need to do to see where people are and how we can move them to a different level, that will be implemented. If you just permit me to add to what <clears throat> Reverend Delaney has said about uh, that aspect, and, and especially to the unchurched. On the, on the northern side, we have been running a program for just about two years now where, that is called Feeding the Community. And so we cooked food and go to different communities. We have been to Stubbs and to Calder Ridge and to Victoria Village and to Bayabu and to Calder. And we just give people food. We have set up what is called a trip shop at Monco. And believe it or not, we have had people coming from as far as Camden Park on this side and as far as Orange Hill up on the north. They come and they get clothing free. They get shoes free. And sometimes they're able to get some food. So that, that has been paying off for us. Because what, what we have noticed is that we have had one or two persons, and I think over time this would increase, one or two persons have, who have never been to church have found themselves in church. And, and, and we think, we, um, although we have a financial um, problem, we are, we are pressing on, a financial challenge. We are, we are still pressing on to, to ensure that that program stays in place. And, and we are hoping that as time goes by, more persons will see it fit to come to church. Okay, is it just about church, though? It, well, it is not just about church, um, because... We're talking here about the person receiving <clears throat> more than just what you get in church. Of course, you get the word, mm -hmm. but I'm figuring that you would want to ensure that people have a right relationship with with Christ that yes. they've given their lives to him. Yeah, definitely. And 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 this is this is one of the this is one of the things that we we are trying to ensure takes place. Because we have had a couple of um, young men who have come and they don't they don't like this come and sit down. And so what I've been doing, Reverend Tavo, I've been doing is to sit with them and, and try to nurture them. And, and um, we are hoping that it will, something will take root and, and will blossom out later on. And we don't expect this to happen overnight. Okay. Reverend Dini, would you want to just expand a bit more on that? Okay, um, we have some facilities which we'll continue to use. So for example, whether it is adult education, wherever that is needed, where we have to have different types of seminars to bring people in, to train them, um, whether we have to go into areas and help through counseling to help persons to move from a particular type of lifestyle to, to, to the one that we believe is Christ-centered those are things that we will do. Obviously, the work done through the women, um, not, not only the women's league, but also the, the wider women's arm of our church, work done through the men, and, along with the youth and young adults. So things are moving, and we, we intend to just touch lives and make a difference in those lives. And you are correct when you said earlier on, it's not simply about telling people to come to worship. It's really to make a difference in their lives and bring them to Christ. And I think at the end of the day, what is going to be very vital is that the community is transformed for the better. You are not only the superintendent minister of the Kingstown Chateaubriand Circuit, but you also are secretary to the South Caribbean Conference. Could you just tell us a bit about 
transferring the decisions there to what you're doing here on the ground in St. Vincent? Of course, when we attend this conference um, triennially and district council the two intermediary years, they, they are representatives from each circuit at those meetings. And so the whole decision making is not simply one where some person at the higher level makes a decision and send down an edict, but rather where we sit around a table and we discuss and, and we come to decisions in a democratic manner. And the, the decision that we take, obviously they were properly documented, and then the, the, the secretary, the work of our district in representative session is done primarily through four areas which we call CAPS, resources and development, mission evangelism and church growth, Christian education, and general education. So the, sec the sub-secretaries for those areas will ensure, along with my, with my assistance, that the programs and other objectives that have been decided upon are implemented. For example, things like church planting seminars is one of the things that we started last year and we're going to continue, which deals with the whole idea of helping to start mission work in other areas. There are other ways too in which we are seeking to develop the leadership of, of our church so that there are special seminars helping to develop the lay leadership of our church. And when we talk about the lay leadership, we're not only talking about local preachers, but we're talking about those who hold lay office in our church. And in some cases, even going beyond the, those lay officers to make it available to anybody in the church who may want to attend those special courses. I mentioned DELS earlier on and the Youth Arm. That's another training initiative, as, as well as, of course, the, the education initiative that will continue to the schools. The Christian education where we will be revamping not only um, the curriculum, but also looking at giving shape and direction so that the whole Sunday school emphasis will be raised right across our district for the long term. So there's the decision making and there is the releasing of information and then the implementation and that goes on unabated right through the year. Okay, as we wrap up, I would just like to ask you to recap very quickly the activities during this month. Right. Okay. Let's start with Friday evening, the district parenting seminar. And that is a seminar that I believe will be beneficial to all. On Saturday night, 7.30, we gather for a special prayer session, and that will be by Zoom. Sunday morning, in all of our respective congregations, celebratory, compact, exciting services, then we journey to special processional weekly start by Sign Hill Plain Field, and then we journey from there to Arnisville Plain Field for the United Celebratory Type Service. On Wednesday next week will be the Town Hall Forum where we seek to reset our evangelism, reclaiming our meals. We have Brother Ronnie Daniel as the moderator, and we have three very good presenters, Sister Laura Anthony Brown, Brother Nigel Scott, and Brother Taja Williams. Um, next Friday will be the competition among the primary school students, including two students from St. Vincent. And then on Saturday afternoon will be the gospel caravan journeying across the island and touching every Methodist location across the Georgetown Mount Cork and the Kingston Chateaubelia circuits. Okay. Any final words, Reverend Harvey? Just like to encourage all those uh, Methodists, not Methodists, wherever you are, on to to join us, especially on on Sunday uh, at the the rally, and come and hear good 
sound preaching and and we pray that you would your hearts would be blessed as you you take part in 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 this activity um, come and listen to really exciting singing and um, I know come release the pressures that you have had over the past two years of not being able to do to congregate in, in, in such a way and so we are we are inviting all and sundry to join us on Sunday especially God's willing okay, thank you very much gentlemen I have been speaking with Reverend Cornelius Sari, Superintendent Minister of the Georgetown Mancoke Circuit, and Reverend Philbert Delaney, the Superintendent Minister of the Kingstown Chatelier Circuit on Methodism on the Move. Thank you very much. Thank you. My welcome. name is Cornelius Oliver. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.